great. Trying to cancel Dr. Seuss and you just might wind up canceling one of my favorite places in Universal Studios Orlando. Way to go. <laughs> He who controls the spice, controls the universe. Hello, hello, hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. I'm Lorena, Lorena Creel, bringing you that spice to sci-fi and pop culture analysis. And this video I really hadn't planned on, uh, on doing, but the more information that I saw about it, the more um, irritated I got. And that, of course, is the news that six Dr. Seuss books are being pulled from publication due to racist imagery. But before I get into that and the uh, <laughs> downflow problem it could cause for Universal Studios Orlando, please do do me a favor please hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell so you get first notification when your girl goes live, when I drop videos and all that so you don't miss out on the spice and salt that your girl is bringing to you. All right, so with that said, let's get going with this video. Now in my early childhood learning, there were actually three, three major influences on me. Um, one, of course, were my parents who encouraged me to read to the point where I could actually read when I was two, no joke. Two was Sesame Street. Watching Sesame Street and all that repetition about letters and words and, and all of that. Um, okay, so maybe four. Three would be um, Schoolhouse Rock, of course. Verbs, adverbs, conjunction, junction, exactly. The fourth one, which last but not least, would be Dr. Seuss books. The first book I ever checked out from the library when I was in kindergarten was a book called, and I think I saw it on Mulberry Street. That book, along with a whole bunch of other Dr. Seuss books, just opened up my mind to learning and for a love of reading that to this day has not gone away. Dr. Seuss had a way of making reading seem fun and interesting and also taught you a couple a couple of things about learning critically and not judging others among all other things. But uh, apparently that's not good enough. So coming to us here from the AP, six Dr. Seuss books won't be published for racist images. Okay, now here's the book that I was telling you about, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street by Dr. Seuss. I really can't remember anything that was ever racist about this book, and I would bring home books. Not only would I read them, but I would read them um, with either my mother or my father, and if there's something in there that was blatantly flicked and racist, I'm pretty sure they would have told me. So to continue on with this article from Boston, the AP, six Dr. Seuss books, including And To Think That I Saw It on Mulberry Street and If I Ran the Zoo, will stop being published because of racist and insensitive imagery. The business that preserves and protects the author's legacy said Tuesday. These books portray people in ways that are hurtful and wrong, Dr. Seuss Enterprises told the Associated Press in a statement that coincided with a late author and illustrator's birthday. Now, of course, any kind of racist imagery is absolutely wrong. So I happened to pull up a couple images to try to figure out what the heck that they were talking about. Now, this uh, snip here shows a Chinaman who eats with sticks. Okay, now when I saw this when I was a kid, I didn't think this was racist at all. If you want to talk about imagery that was blatantly racist, go back and pull up a copy of The Aristocrats from Disney and watch the thing with the two Siamese cats. That's blatant racism right there, okay? But from this picture, he looks like he's in a traditional costume and all he has is a bowl of rice with sticks. I guess maybe because his skin is yellow, that's a problem. 
I don't know. I didn't think that it was, but I don't see a caricature here at all. He's not, they're not portraying him in like a racist caricature. He's portrayed like an actual character in traditional dress. I didn't think that this was racist when I read it and when I was a kid. And if it was, you know what? I'd ask my parents about it and they would tell me. I didn't hear anything about it. Again, I don't see anything here that looks offensive. I could be wrong, but I'm not seeing anything that tells me that this person is inferior to me or inferior in any way. And if you think it's inferior, maybe you're seeing something that's not there. I don't know. That's up to the individual person. And this picture is from If I Ran the Zoo. Now it's a little, a uh, little bit fuzzy, but the wording says, I'll go to the African island of Yurka and bring back a rizzle top tufted mazurka, a kind of canary with quite a tall throat, his neck so long if he swallows an oat. For breakfast the first day of April, they say, it has to go down such a very long way that it gets stuck in his stomach until the 15th of May. All right, so looking here, of course, you see the bird with the extremely tall neck, and you see two here that just look like caricatures. Some could say, yeah, that probably looks racist. I'm saying it's a little iffy. But I don't, but I don't see like them making fun of these characters at all. I don't see them as a character. I don't see them like blackface sambos, okay? I don't see that, all right? I see them as two characters they're saying as being from an African island. Is it racist? It's a little racially insensitive. I think so. The depictions could have been much better, especially compared to the Asian character that we saw, but I'm not canceling Dr. Seuss for, for this. But anyway, let's move on to uh, some more about the AP article from what they were saying. Ceasing sales of these books is only part of our commitment and broader plan to ensure Dr. Seuss Enterprises catalog represents and supports all communities and families. So instead of using these books as a teachable moment, they just want to erase them which I don't think does anyone really any good. These books are, are legendary, fundamental to children's learning experiences. And frankly, if these books were so racist to begin with, um, explain to me two things. One, why wasn't Dr. Seuss racist when Michelle Obama invited him to the White House? I know one was talking about it being, you know, racist then. If anything, the first lady was really emphasizing the importance of reading. And not only that, but using a legendary children's book icon to do it. So if it was racist, don't you think she would have sniffed that out? I'm just saying. Looks a little suspect. And to, to add further evidence to this, let's uh Look at a little video from uh, whitehouse.gov. Again, a Dr. Seuss event that's going on. Okay. I don't know who this dude is in the hat, but that's definitely Michelle Obama there in the middle. And I really don't see her body language indicating that this is some kind of racist book that they're supposed that they're reading here. I don't get that. I don't get it at all. So here's my beef that uh, that I have. If these books were supposedly racist and <laughs> Dr. Seuss Enterprises knew this, why did they wait until the day of his birthday? to drop this information. So this is from uh, WFTV's website. Actually, this is out of Orlando, but it's interesting to see other people's takes on this article. So on what would have been Dr. Seuss's 117th birthday, a decision was made to no longer publish six of the famed author's story. So let's actually pick up uh, on a section that piqued my interest. It says, 
Despite the positive messages of environmentalism and tolerance, some of the illustrations used in his books to depict Black and Asian characters have been criticized. His early advertising and propaganda drawings have also come under fire over the past few years. Again, reporting by the AP. Again, that early advertising and propaganda, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about that. And it's not that Dr. Seuss was the only ones involved with that. Disney was involved with that as well, with propaganda during that time, say around uh, World War II. That's an open secret. That's an open secret. We are talking about the books for children that, that he's written. Some of them may think that those depictions of Black and Asian characters are insensitive. Not going to say that they're not, but at the same time, why do you think yanking the books solves the problem? Yanking the books doesn't solve the problem. If anything, yanking the books made people want to see what happened in the first place. What are you trying to cover up? You know, be honest about it. It's kind of like the situation, of course, people know that I researched my family. It's like me finding DNA relatives that I have in common. And the only reason that we have DNA in common is because we share the same white ancestor who happened to may or may not have been a slave owner. In some cases, it was a slave owner. In some cases, it wasn't. But you get that guilt where they're trying to cover everything up. I'm not trying to cover up anything with that respect to my family history because I have black slave owners, I have white slave owners, I have Native American slave owners in my family. It is what it is. It's history. You can't change it. You can't judge past history based on society now. But society now, you look and see what went wrong in history and you prevent that from ever happening again. You use that as a teachable moment. So something else interesting in here that says, while this news is just being released, Dr. Seuss Enterprises said the decision was made last year. Okay, now again, you make this decision last year, but you wait to drop it on his birthday. So what that tells me is, you weren't going to get enough publicity to, quote unquote, do the right thing when you knew to do the right thing. You decide to do it at a time where I would say it would blow up the most just to bring attention to you, to basically say, see, aren't we great? We're throwing our racist um, boundary here under the bus. That doesn't make you look good at all. And really, it's not fooling anyone and not impressing anyone, frankly. All it's telling me is that you're just trying to hide knowledge and you're trying to sully the image of someone who was so fundamental to children's books and children having a love for reading for several decades. And it's freaking selfish and you're selfish. And speaking of selfish, when I talked about the downstream implications of this, so something that I hoped would not happen Looks like it's gonna go, looks like it's gonna go that way. From Spectrum News 13, Universal Orlando evaluating experiences in Dr. Seuss themed area. Now, those of you who know me know I love going to Universal Orlando. And one of my favorite places to go in Universal Orlando is Seuss Landing over at Islands of Adventure. It is themed just absolutely amazing. And if you've been a fan of the Dr. Seuss books, it's like Graceland for you when you go there. It's just the scale, the detail, everything. Everything is just is just great there. And speaking of uh, one of the books that I was talking about, here's the uh, shop actually there with respect to to the book. So it makes me wonder what's going to happen with this, right? Okay, well, let's go back to the article to uh, read some more about, about what's going on. So we'll skip the front matter and all of that and zero in onto the part that's of interest to us, which says, Seuss Landing also features a gift shop called Mulberry Street Store, which gets its name from And to Think That I Saw It on Mulberry Street, another book that will be discontinued. 
there is also a Mulberry Street sign along the walkway. Spectrum News reached out to Universal Orlando to see whether Tuesday's announcement would have any impact on the area. Universal said it's evaluating the in-park experiences in that area, but visitors will still be able to enjoy Seuss Landing. So the quote here is, Seuss Landing continues to be very popular with our guests and we value our relationship with Seuss Enterprises, a Universal spokesperson said in a statement. We've removed the books from our shelves as they have asked and we'll be evaluating our in-park experience too. But our guests can plan on continuing to be able to enjoy their favorite experiences at Seuss Landing. Okay, so the part that bothers me is they've removed the books as Seuss Enterprise has asked them to. Okay, granted, they developed that part of the park in conjunction with Seuss Enterprises. Again, it's another form of book burning, another form of censorship. So you're going to take those books away. And who knows how many kids discovered those books because they went to that park. All right. So you're complicit in uh, in that. So I'm really disappointed, Universal, that you that you did that. But, uh, you know, I guess you have to keep your relationship with Seuss Enterprises and do what they tell you they tell you to do. So who knows what's going to happen um, with that particular shop in Seuss Landing? They mind, may wind up retheming it. I don't know. Go dog, go. Fox and socks. Who knows what the heck they'll, they'll wind up calling it, but who knows? Maybe it'll blow over and they'll leave it alone, um, or maybe they'll wind up changing it because Seuss Enterprises asked them to. We'll have to see what happens. But, you know, that compiled with changes with the Jungle Cruise that they're, you know, the diversity changes they want to do with the Jungle Cruise over at Disney, um, it's not a good look. It's not a good look at all. And it's it's obvious out there that you have these group of people who are deeming things problematic and removing them rather than letting it stay out there and allow the conversation to happen. You know? I mean, I do have to hand it to Disney. At least they just slapped a disclaimer of offensive material on uh, the Muppet Show, seasons one through three, and they didn't yank it. The Seuss Enterprises, they just, they've stopped printing them and had Universal yank the books. And, you know, I was actually at a Target this afternoon, went looking for some of these books they had ceased publication on, couldn't find a one. Yeah, a little suspect, isn't it? Well, that's your girl's spicy take on this issue. Um, what's your spicy take? Do you think that Seuss Enterprises was correct in yanking these books? Do you believe that those particular sections that we talked about, do you think that they're so racially insensitive that it warranted the books being pulled? Or, you know, are you just like, I'm okay with it. Let the information stay out there and let the discussion happen. And for those of you who are, um, theme park fans, especially of Seuss Landing in Universal, would it bother you if they rethemed that one shop that's based on, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street, or would it not, you know, bother you if they knocked it down and, or just rethemed it, or just changed the sign on the, you know, on the outside? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments on that. All right, so with that said, that is going to wrap up another video. Please do make sure to like this video, share this video, and of course, subscribe to my channel, right? And as always, never underestimate the power of pop culture. Stay plugged in. Bye.